Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life where we're talking all things true crime. I've got my red flag here. I am going to wave it when there is a red flag that pops up, which let me just tell you guys, this is going to be waving like all over the place today. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this and have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I have a red flag in my hand and I wave it occasionally in videos when there is a red flag in the case. So if you're brand new stopping by for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy today's case coverage and consider subscribing to the channel. The case we're talking about today, guys, is a doozy. I hate that word, but it really is. It's a doozy because it's one of those cases where you think to yourself and ask yourself, is this person this stupid? Is this person this crazy? Kind of like a Jodi Arias almost where you're like, how does somebody's brain even work that way? And what the heck it, like, is this real? It, I mean, it's a wild one, guys, and it gets a little bit graphic, so I just want to warn you, but nonetheless, it is a very fascinating case, so we are going to jump right into it. Tend to Life with Annie Elise starts right now. Today's case takes place in Water Park, Florida. And in late February of 2020, just before the pandemic really happened and was in full swing, that's when the root of this case first took form. Sarah and Jorge, also named and goes by George, both are 42 years old, and they had been dating since 2017, so about three years now. Sarah has a young son with her ex-husband, and Jorge, George, had three kids with his ex-wife. He worked at Ace Hardware while trying to get his life back on the right track by attending mandatory parole hearings and counseling, all of which his girlfriend, Sarah Boone, was very supportive of. And in 20 of 2020, after three years of dating, the couple was striving to make their relationship better, despite coming from a pretty tumultuous past. In 2018, a physical fight resulted in a police report being drawn up against the couple. Neither Sarah nor her boyfriend had filed charges at the time, but it did result in this report being filed. Authorities were unable to determine the aggressor, so both Sarah and George were arrested. Then, in June of 2019, another fight between the couple resulted in Sarah getting completely beaten up badly by George for talking to another man. He reportedly got so jealous, so overprotective, if you could even call it that, that he literally physically assaulted and attacked Sarah. A no contact order was issued against George because of this. George then violated the order and Sarah stated that she did not encourage or resist the violation and that it was just very even keel. Police later found George at the couple's apartment fighting again and again he was arrested. And this was just one of three incidents of intimate partner violence, or DV as we often call it, that were reported over the total of 2019. Now, that is a lot for any relationship to go through. And it's, you know, let me start waving these red flags right now, guys, because any physical altercations are bad news bears in any relationship. But there were three in just 2019 alone, showing, in my opinion, that something was not only, not only was a pattern established, but something was beginning to escalate here. On the evening of Sunday, February 23rd, 2020, the couple was reportedly having a good day together. They were drinking Chardonnay, they were doing puzzles, they were painting, and they were playing hide and seek. Now, this is something in this case that needs to just be remembered. Keep in your mind, they were playing hide and seek. And yes, they are 42 years old. 42 years old and playing hide and seek. Look, I'm waving my red flag, even though that could be innocent fun. There is something that I find very, very strange about that. During this game of hide and seek, Sarah said that they thought that it would be funny for George to hide in a suitcase. Why Sarah, the seeker in the game, helped George hide inside this suitcase and know where he was hiding is unclear, though, when the entire point of hide and seek is to find those that are hiding. So why would she help him into a hiding spot? Mm, something doesn't say really seem right about that, guys. And again, they're also 42 years old. But anyway, Sarah did say that she actually had to use a paper clip to close the suitcase because the zipper was broken. Then around 11 p.m. that evening, Sarah went upstairs and waited for George to join her. 
Apparently, while waiting for him, she fell asleep, which is weird, guys. It's weird. So when she woke up the next morning on Monday, February 24th, around 11 a.m., waking up around 11 a.m. is also a red flag. I don't think I've slept till 11 a.m. since, like, high school. She woke up because she heard her phone was going off. And then she remembered, magically, that George was in the suitcase downstairs. I don't know how you wake up and don't see your boyfriend or your spouse beside you in bed and just happen to remember oh my gosh, I locked them with a paperclip inside a suitcase downstairs while we were playing an innocent game of hide and seek. This whole thing is just so weird. I told you guys, it's weird. So when she remembers that he is in the suitcase downstairs, she goes downstairs and she opens it up. And when she opens it up, his body was stiff and purple in her words. After seeing this, she called her ex-husband, who was 10 minutes away from their apartment, why she didn't call the police right away, and why she called her ex-husband, TBD, we'll talk about it more in a second. So he's about 10 minutes away from their apartment, and when he got there, he sees George, and he then tells Sarah, call 911. So the operator answers and asks, police or medical? Sarah replies to the 911 operator, my boyfriend is dead. Now, she remained calm throughout the call, saying that she pulled him out of the suitcase and also saying, I put him in a suitcase. And we were kind of playing a game, like hide and seek kind of. It's, it was just a fun kind of thing we were playing. And she also then tells the operator twice that she tried CPR. Seven times during that call, Sarah says he's purple. And during that call, she actually goes from calm to annoyed. So medical. My boyfriend is dead. You can send the line for the fire department. Do not hang up. The fire department takes over the call. And for the next few minutes, officials are obtaining critical details about what happened. Now tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm-hmm. I put him in a case when we were playing. And okay. Like kind of hide-and-seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep, and I woke up, and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. Okay, you'd be hanging from somewhere or what, ma'am? No, I pulled him out of the suitcase. I tried giving him CPR. Just keep on pumping. That's all you need to do for me. Keep on pumping his chest for me. That's, I don't need you to stop and talk or anything. I just want you to count out loud for me, okay? 31. 32. Please hurry. Okay, ma'am, they're getting there as fast as they can, okay? He's deaf and he's purple. When the police arrived on the scene, they saw George beside the suitcase near the front door of the apartment. And he obviously was deceased at this point. The following day on Tuesday, February 25th, police got a search warrant for Sarah's phone. And what they found on her phone completely contradicted what she had been telling police this entire time. In her first interview with detectives, she said that she and George were drinking a glass of Woodbridge Chardonnay while putting together a puzzle and painting and this, you know, happy, fun, innocent story. She then said that when they were done, they decided to play hide and seek. She said she first hit upstairs in her shower, but that he never came and never found her, so she went back downstairs. She said they then thought it would be funny if he got inside the suitcase, which apparently he did willingly, she told the detectives. She also said that they had been drinking, but that she wasn't drunk, but George was, and she insisted that. She said, I needed to keep my wits about her, whatever that means, but that was a direct quote. After police dumped her phone, though, two videos were discovered, and it painted all of this in a very different light, because two short videos that were recorded that night that George died were now in the detective's hands and were being viewed. Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. In one video, the suitcase is in the frame, and George is saying, Sarah, from inside of it. You can hear him calling her name from inside of it. And Sarah, who is recording this video, responds, saying, that's my name, don't wear it out. And you can hear George pleading with her to be let out of this suitcase. He says, Sarah, I can't effing breathe, babe. Seriously, let me out. And Sarah, who sounds, in my opinion, absolutely wasted, responds to him saying, yeah, that's what you do when you choke me out. She also says, this is on you. That's what it feels like when you cheat on me. So this is now looking much more like retaliation and punishment of sorts, rather than an innocent game of hide and seek and you both thinking that it would be just hysterical to stuff yourself inside of a suitcase. So Sarah can be heard laughing while George is literally begging her to be set free. 
and she says to him, you should probably shut the F up. Now, the medical examiner ruled the cause of death as positional asphyxiation. Now, I have never heard that term before. Of course, I've heard of strangulation, suffocation, asphyxiation, but never positional asphyxiation. I can't say that word, guys. Why can't I say that word right now? And the Emmy also ruled the manner of death as homicide. So how long was George suffocating in that suitcase? Well, according to the ME, he had to have been in there for up to 11 hours. Now, among many of his injuries, George had a black eye, bruises, and cuts on his head. He also had abrasions on the back of his hands and bruises and cuts indicating a blunt impact. So in the second video that detectives now had from Sarah's phone, he can be heard yelling her name again and again, and the suitcase now is in a completely different position. The bag is now facing upward, indicating that Sarah, the only other person who was in their apartment that night, had actually been flipping the suitcase with her boyfriend inside of it. So is that how he sustained these injuries? He's literally in the suitcase begging for help, begging to be let out, saying he can't breathe, and she's flipping it up on its side, and he's hitting his head, and he's in this weird position. It's horrible. Meanwhile, she's just laughing at him the whole time. And again, I believe there's more of a resentment buildup and a punishment as for why this is happening. I don't think that it ever was intended to be a fun, innocent game, not for a second. During her interrogation, Sarah says, 100% right hand to God, I have no idea how he got those injuries. She told detectives that she was the one who made sure he went to see his probation officer and his court-ordered classes, that he was changed, telling detectives, he's changed, he's changed, I love him. And the detectives pointed out the obvious pattern in their relationship, that she would call the cops on George and then she would bail him out the very next day and that they had this cycle of sorts going back and forth and they were like on this hamster wheel and just couldn't get off. According to the affidavit, she laughed at him in these recordings, saying, for everything you've done to me, F you, stupid, F you. So taunting him, making fun of him, and punishing him. Again, that's what I truly believe. While sorting out the graphic details, one detective asked, have you ever in the past zipped George up in anything, jokingly or not? And Sarah emphatically replied, absolutely not, absolutely not. This morning we went to his autopsy. Um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has. He fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall. All honesty, we have not gotten into it. Okay. That's why, like, the only thing I thought you guys were going to ask me about, which I was going to be honest with you anyway, are the scratch marks on his back. Mm-hmm. Everything else, I have no idea. have been good. What's your definition? I've been good. good. I don't think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. He comes at me. So it's either I flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep. Have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship? Mm -hmm. When you have played, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. Okay. So it was just kind of like that prop was there and it was there and it was in play because... Why do you say it like that though? I would never do that. no videos on Sunday. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found. Um, and it was from your phone. Mm-hmm. Do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <clears throat> well, it's on your phone. And... You can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. That's you. Sarah. Your voice. Stupid. Sarah. It's my name. Don't wear it up. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. Watch it, please. He's begging to let for you to let him out. You sound you're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. Well, same you. It's not malicious. Then what is that? What does you mean to you? 
Thankfully, it was determined that Sarah's son was not home during this deadly game of hide and seek. And after being shown the videos, hearing George's pleas and her laughter, she finally admitted to flipping the suitcase with him in it, but not before saying, I'm a straight A student. I'm an outstanding mother to my son. I excel at everything. Um, hi, this isn't about your report card, Sarah. This is about you as a human being and how you're treating your boyfriend, regardless his history and what that kind of relationship was. This has nothing to do with your education or if you're a good mother. Like, beat it. That, what are you talking about here? As Sarah and the detectives watched the videos, Sarah shouted, this is killing me right now, as though she had some sort of remorse or regret. She then insisted her actions were not intentional. And she says her exact words were they were not intentional and they were not malicious. Not buying it. Not buying it, guys. After her insistence that her statements were not hateful, the detective asks her, okay, so what exactly does F.U. mean to you? Like, if your actions weren't intentional or malicious and you're telling him F off, F.U., what does that mean to you? And she replies, Number one, I had no idea it was going to end like that. Number two, you know what? I'll give you five minutes in there. Yeah, this is what she said to the detective. I'll give you five minutes in there. So the detective went silent. Then the detective asked, uh, hi, five minutes for what? So was she trying to say that she was going to put the detective in a suitcase too? Like, is, is everything punishment by suitcase? I don't understand. So in response to him asking five minutes for what, her response was to put all of the blame of the cruel and unusual punishment on the Chardonnay. Blame it on the alcohol, guys. And look, I've had my share of, my fair share of wine and alcohol F-ups in my life. I'm not going to say I haven't, but like, come on, girl. You can't be blaming this on the Chardonnay. She continues to say, I will never drink alcohol again. I don't care what is in it. Any type of way, shape, or form, I'm never drinking it again. And this was after she had insisted that she didn't drink at all that night and wasn't drunk. So how are you now blaming it on the alcohol when before you were saying you didn't even drink that much, you weren't drunk, you had to keep your wits about you? None of it is making sense. So Sarah Boone was arrested and charged with second degree murder. Her trial was set to begin on May 16th of 2022 this year, but it's been delayed now for unknown reasons and no new date has been scheduled. So I'm curious to know a few things. First of all, I want to know your thoughts. Do you think that maybe they were just like white wine wasted and they really didn't think it would be funny for him to get in this suitcase and have her zipper it up and lock him in it and she truly went to bed and forgot about him? Or do you think that she pretended it was a game and that's how it started, knowing that the plan was a little bit more sinister, maybe not thinking death, maybe not, but she was trying to punish him. And then maybe she went upstairs and the reason she slept until 11 a.m. was because she passed out from all the alcohol and then by then he had already suffocated. It's my personal belief that she somehow got him in that suitcase with some sort of ruse or trickery and then was trying to punish him um, or scare him and then it went too far. I don't know if she necessarily meant to kill him from the jump or if it was just a tragic accident, but regardless... She was obviously trying to inflict some sort of abuse on him, whether psychological, physical, whatever, especially she admitted to flipping the suitcase over and over while he's in it. Like, you're tumbling and you're in, like, ah, oh, that is awful. So I want to know what you think about this. How do you think it was brought up that he even get in the suitcase? And what do you think Sarah's intentions were behind it? Let me know in the comments below. Now that we still don't have a new date set for trial, it should be coming up in the near future, so I'm going to keep following this closely, and I'll let you know more as we learn, because it is one where you're truly like, what the hell is wrong with this person? And like, what the hell were they thinking? It's just beyond bizarre and crazy. So I'm going to keep following it, and I'll keep you updated. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already, so that you get notified of those updates as well. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in with me today. I hope you enjoyed the case coverage. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out or rate the podcast if you are listening to it in your car or on your run or wherever you are. And we will talk again very soon. Until the next case, stay safe. Bye. And then this